Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition, another, another edition of The Democratic View. My name is Phyllis Italiano, and I am the hostess. And with me today, I have a very, very special person, the person who roped me into doing this show in the first place. Her name appears on the last slide, and her name is Debbie Kruger's. Hi, Phyllis. One of <laughs> our town trustees, yeah. Democratic town trustee. And I do want to say that uh, we are so pleased with some of the things that you have been working on in this town. You have been head of what became, what started out as the Litter Committee. Mm -hmm and now has morphed into... It's expanded its uh, scope and mission. <laughs> to, and what's it being called It now? is now the East Hampton Recycling and Litter Committee. And you know what? I was thinking that when I was a, first started teaching science in a private school in Bedford Village, I remember the words that in the 1980s we were using Reduce, mm -hmm. reuse, mm -hmm. recycle. And I've added something on the end of that. What is that? Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to bring today, and I forgot it on the way out, but I have this, this device, which is a prong device with a wooden base, where you take a plastic bag that you have used, mm -hmm. rinse it, and dry it. Oh, nice. On there. Good idea. And it... Uh, it's a wonderful thing so that my plastic bags are reused, over, reused, and, and reused. Good. The only time I take a new one is if I'm putting something particularly special in the way of food, <laughs> you know, like lettuce, something like that that I've picked from my garden. Good for you. But I do that all the time. As a matter of fact, when we rented uh, a house in Fire Island, we, we rented my sister's house in Fire Island, and one of those things was there. Wow. Some guy wrote a note and said, the guy who rented said, what is that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I have long been a believer Good. in doing this sort of thing. Good. So tell us what you want us to do. Well, thank you for having me on the show. It was short notice, but we have a very important uh, program going on in the town of East Hampton right now. Uh, we have declared October Recycling Awareness Month. And the town board unanimously approved that designation. And the idea is to raise awareness um, on the benefits of recycling, not only to um, the planet, which is, you know, a no-brainer that everyone talks about. Of course, you know, recycling reduces uh, the use of natural resources, reduces um, energy consumption. It can reduce water pollution, air pollution, all these types of um, you know, carbon. It also, you know, a lot of our things that we recycle is made out of uh, oil, natural gas, and things of that nature. So we need to oh. reduce that. And um, so, but one of the other benefits of recycling is to increase our uh, input of recyclables to the recycling facility, which will then generate revenue for the town of East Hampton. So we've um, initiated a number of um, different programs throughout the month. And um, the two that um, I'm really interested in seeing how the public responds. Actually, I think there's, there's three that would really generate a lot of revenue. One is called a call for cardboard. And the last week in October, starting October 25th, we're asking everyone, basically we want people to hoard cardboard. <laughs> what? You look, <laughs> you look. What do you mean by cardboard? Cardboard, not, this is not cardboard. Cardboard, um, uh, corrugated cardboard. We want people to bring in their cardboard at the end of the month. If you don't have a recycling center permit, don't worry about it. We're going to let everybody in from anywhere because cardboard is a commodity. It's in high demand this time of year because, you know, with holidays and such. And um, it's a very high demand product anyway. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me there are people who go to that town 
we, what we call the dump. Recycling and, center. <laughs> and do not bring their cardboard. Well, there? Their you corrugated know, they, cardboard. They, How could they throw that out? They may, but the thing is, is maybe sometimes they're not so mindful of it. Maybe if it gets wet, or if it gets dirty, or if they're not. We're, we're just really trying to make people more aware to know. Save your cardboard. You know, if you might normally not be so mindful. We want you to be very mindful about it. And also some people that might have private carters pick up their trash. Don't put the cardboard out. Bring it to the town. Um, the last week in October, no pass necessary. There's a special uh, section that Steve Lynch, our uh, sanitation department head, he will set up in the back um, with his guys. And we're going to gather up as much cardboard as we can. We're going to bail it up and we're going to sell it and we're going to make money. Um, stores, um, please bring your cardboard in. It will reduce the stores, the businesses, cost of disposing of these items because if you're a business, you just pay each month to have your items taken away. So if maybe we can take up less room in the dumpster. You know, there's a, we don't want to lose this natural resource. Once it gets um, dirty or wet, it's no longer recyclable, it becomes trash. And uh, it takes up landfill space. Cardboard doesn't really biodegrade in the bottom of a landfill. It needs oxygen, it needs microbes, it needs light and that thing, you know, things of that nature. So well, that's the one thing that we want to do to increase um, revenue to the town and to decrease what we're shipping out of town. I don't know if you're aware or if the viewers are aware, but over the summer there was like a real protest against our trash up the island because they, they were, there was actually, we had <laughs> a lot of stuff being, um, we couldn't get rid of it here. We had to like hold it for a bit because there was like a backlog and it was trash coming from East Hampton. I mean, we collected almost a million pounds of debris just from our road ends, our beaches, just from stuff being left at our beaches and our road ends, which isn't beach trash. You know, I mean, it's a lot of illegal dumping and stuff, but that, that's another topic. But um, we want to reduce our um, export of trash out of town. We want to export recyclables. We want to make money on it. The other um, thing that we're doing is um, aluminum cans. We're doing a kids can recycle contest with all of the East Hampton schools. So um, we're, we're kind of in the very um, initial stages of it. We've contacted the schools. Um, the way the program will work is we'll bring them bags. And I hope, 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 hope all the schools participate. Um, we'll bring them bags, and the kids will bring in their aluminum cans. The, the school with the most cans by weight per child will win um, a beautiful evergreen tree, and maybe a little bit of a garden. We're going to try to get these items, the prizes donated. We don't have the prizes, but, you know, again, another call for prizes for the kids. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll figure it out, weight per child. So even Wayne Scott could win you know, with their 20 right. kids. Right. So we're going to, you know, figure it out per, you know, weight per children. So whoever brings in the most. Now, aluminum is a, um, a valuable commodity that we can make a lot of money on. When you say aluminum, I... I yeah, it's like soda, beer, whatever comes in aluminum, not, t not tin, not like cat food or um, tomato sauce or anything of that nature. Aluminum, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's not steel. It's aluminum. So that's what we're asking the kids. Clean, you know, rinse them out easy for the kids, um, and uh, at the end of the month, I think November 3rd or something like that, it's a Monday, um, we'll collect it, we'll weigh it up, and uh, we'll announce the, the winning school. And if anyone has any other prizes, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I mean, Springs has a lot of kids, you know, we would be thinking pizza party, that kind of thing, that's not going to work. That's why actually one of my children came up with the idea, you know, give them a tree, an evergreen tree, and, uh, you know, it kind of lasts forever. So that will be, um, you know, I hope all the schools will participate. We've got, um, um, well, this will air after the trustees' con uh, largest clam contest, but we're going to be recycling shells at our trustees' uh, 24th annual largest clam contest, and the trustees will be initiating a shell recycling program for envir environmental purposes uh, in the coming months, I hope. How, how do you recycle shells? Well, you have to let them kind of dry out. Dry out. Um, we're going to, we haven't worked out the details, but uh, Trustee you, Miller, what? Trustee Forsberg, and myself, we've discussed this here and there. Um, and we need to put back into the waters what we're taking out. We're constantly taking out this calcium carbonate that the shells are made of. Yes, indeed. We've uh -huh. got ocean well, acidification, which is... CO, CO3. There you go. <laughs> exactly. We've got the, um, the shells are the, uh, the, the calcifying creatures, not just... Uh, uh, 
shellfish, but you know, there's little copepods and other little marine things right. that rely on calcium to build and live. So we, all we do is taking this out, we need to put it back. And this isn't something I've come up with. This is nothing new. It's been done in Louisiana, North Carolina, uh, New Hampshire. The Southampton trustees have just done a, a major uh, shell remediation. Wow. So yeah, so that's. Um, so could there, could, there, could there be some place, let's say every time uh, we get clams and we have clams, well, would there be a place that we could? Actually, there them? already is, and uh, that's at our sanitation, at our recycling center. There is a place for shells already. I've been joking, but I'm not joking. It Where? should be illegal to throw away shells in the town of East Hampton. Um, we are a shell fishing community. You know, back to the Indians. We you know, just wampum. Put it on our driveway. That's the uh, old Bonica driveway material. But but again. We want to return it to the I sea. I understand what you're saying. And it will help, uh, like, oysters settle on the shells. It will help with scallops and little fish. And, you know, it's got to be put in in the right time of year. So I'm not going to encourage anyone to just go dump shells in the water. That's not allowed even. Um, because if you do it at the wrong time of year, fouling organisms can grow on it, and it won't create the habitat that we're trying to create. We so, can, so where do I do, where do I put them in the dump? Well, right now, just save them in the yard. Put them in the corner. <laughs> oh, until. Right. Until we come up with the, you know, and the bigger picture is restaurants. Think about how much they throw out. Now they put it in their dumpster. That's totally like that's They're not heavy. Not even making a driveway like I do. No, and it's really heavy. So we get rid of our garbage by weight. So imagine the the the, the how much it weighs to throw away something that's a real valuable natural resource. So. Um, what else are we doing? We're doing this, um, um, it's an art installation at Town Hall. It's um, a recycling graveyard. And there'll be about five or six of these um, uh, outside of Town Hall. You won't be able to miss it. Um, they're not there yet because they're here. But, um, and it's just to let people know like how long things last. Like plastic never, ever biodegrades. It photodegrades. It breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces until uh, it becomes dust. And it's a, it's, there's more uh, plastic in the sea than plankton. The plastic gets in the plankton, works its way back up to the, in the food web, and we eat it. Um, this one is your favorite, cigarette filters. Um, oh, the most common the form of, of my existence. The most common form of marine debris on the planet is cigarette filters and smoking-related debris, the cigar tips, the lighters. It kills wildlife. Cigarette filters are toxic. If you put it in water, I think it's like one filter in a gallon can kill fish. It's a toxic substance, not good. Um, birds ingest it, fish ingest it, and, and the leaching of these chemicals. It's just really bad. So please smokers, smoke away. Just throw away your cigarette butts. Don't Flick them. The beach is not an ashtray. Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. and it, they never biodegrade. They're made of plastic, and uh, it's acetate, and it's just not cool. <laughs> so you know, uh, <laughs> I I know that uh, I have. There was a young woman who, <clears throat> I think she did a research paper on uh, taking the phyto and zooplankton mm -hmm. and and the little strands of plastic that are in these things nowadays in our oceans. Mm -hmm. And when that plane went down over Oh yeah, the they couldn't ocean. find it for all of the plastic, the floating debris. I think New York is now trying to ban something called microbeads in our, you know, in our makeup and facial products and our cosmetics. There's something called microbeads. They're plastic and they're finding that in alarming amounts in our oceans. So I mean, we are just poisoning our planet. We're poisoning our seas. And without, you know, the oceans is our water. It creates our ox. More o people think, you know, trees create oxygen. No, the, the, the oceans from the phytoplankton in the oceans create the oxygen that we breathe. So, I mean, um, you know, it's a much bigger picture. But let's get back to Recycling Awareness Month. Um, one of the, the kickoff to the Recycling Awareness Month was this flyer that came in the, um, the East Hampton Star. And this was, again, an initiative. Um, you know, Steve Lynch, big thumbs up. He's not only our sanitation super, supervisor, he's our elected highway superintendent. He's also the Department of Public, Public Works. So we um, reinvigorated uh, this adopt -a road program. And people can uh, adopt a one-mile section of the road, and they clean it up eight times a year. And they can, if they would like, get a sign. 
It could say anything on it that's nice. <laughs> you know, put the sign up or not. Um, it's up to you. And Steve's turning around these signs in two days. He's gotten more response in the past three or four weeks to this flyer than he's had in his entire term in office and probably many, many years that, that this program hasn't been um, embraced. So we've embraced this program. You go on the town website, you uh, download the uh, contract, print it out, br call up the phone number, which is 324-0925. Uh, um, after you download the form, go down to the, <laughs> the highway department's office. I laugh because it's in a trailer, but it's okay, I guess. Um, and they'll help you um, choose your road. If it's not a road that's adoptable, they'll help you to choose a road. And um, I want to do my own road. You can do your own road. Yeah. But Clearwater won't let you have a sign. But that's okay. It's not about the sign, right? It's about cleaning the road. Actually, the reason I hadn't done it was because I couldn't figure out what I would put on a sign. But now, now I know I can't. You remember? I don't think Clearwater allows uh, signs, No, they don't right? allow signs. Yeah. But that doesn't mean people don't do signs. But well, I will they certainly. They think they'd know it's your sign if it's as Phyllis yes. Italiano. No, I, would, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't do it like that anyway. I put it in loving memory of my sister Aww, as well. That's, see, that's what I thought. Anyone could, it doesn't have to be like a business. It could be something like that. The other side of the flyer that came in the star last week um, talks about what people need to do to recycle, what's recyclable, how to recycle it at our facility. So what we do as a community, um, this was giving people the um, information that they need. And then, um, let's see, what else did we do? For, oh, Recycling Awareness Month, we also um, have information for recycling at work. So, uh, you know, again, businesses aren't required to recycle in the town of East Hampton as we are that when we bring our stuff to the recycling facility, we're required under town code to recycle. Bus businesses are not, but they can do it anyway. So there's a, a website that I found called recyclingatwork.org. If they go on that website, there's a lot of great um, ideas and different things and fun activities and different ways to get your office or your business or school or, um, you know. Do we have a plastic bag ban yet? Phyllis, no, we do not. Um, but the state of California just um, proposed one, and I would like to see how that plays out. There's a number of states that states that are now going hard with this. Um, it'll be interesting. Well, I I, even if you, we, you if the, if we don't, I think it's up to everybody to. I just keep the bags in the back of my car. It's easy. And uh, it's because easy. you know what, <laughs> I don't want all that plastic because then I have to turn around and bring it back to the store, and you know. And not every store mm -hmm. has a place for you to put them in. They have to be large enough to go under the DE, Department of Environmental Conservation, plastic bag uh, recycling um, law in order to have to follow the law. They have to be large enough. But um, again, these bags are made out of natural gas, oil, petrochemicals. I want to drive a car with gas, not, you know, waste this natural resource on plastic bags. And yeah, our bags that we buy are made out of plastic, but they last for 20, you know what I mean? If you buy plastic, big, you know, nice sturdy plastic bag. Mine are cotton. Well, I've got both, you know, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's better than, you know, getting a bag. Yes, absolutely. I want to ask you one question and you may not be able to answer it and you may not even want to answer it, but there are <laughs> certain kinds of things that I have to put into my trash because I, of course, compost everything that's... Good for you. That's part of our initiative as well. But what I really hate is to take a cereal box mm -hmm. and have to put that into my trash. And I yeah. have talked about that before. Yeah. There are so many things like that, that sort of light cardboard yeah. that really should be... We, it should be something that we should work on. Yeah, uh, you know. some, some uh, municipalities can recycle that and others can't. Right now, I don't think that we're at that point that we can take that uh, glossy, that type of um, product. But um, if I find out differently, I'll, I'll let you know and you could announce it on your show. Well, you know what? I want you to work on that one, Deb, because mm -hmm. that really breaks my heart every yeah. time I have I mean, to do it that. is cardboard, but just some things are just not... 
you know, like what's recyclable, like some things are difficult, like, you know, you're supposed to take the cap off, you know, when you recycle and, and the things that we accept are just number ones and twos. What do we do with number fives? Like a yogurt container is number five. That's not recyclable in our community. So, I mean, styrofoam is not recyclable like anywhere because it's so lightweight. This is made out of oil. It's also a carcinogen according to the EPA. So don't eat your food out of styrofoam. I hate styrofoam, but it's useful. I hate it too. <laughs> but, you know, we use these things, but just using them wisely. Um, one of our initiatives is to ask people to compost. 30% of our trash by weight is food scraps. We can, it's a, it's a wonderful natural resource that can actually enrich the earth. You can make wonderful soil out of it. And there happens to be in Riverhead at the end of the month, which goes great with our Recycling Awareness Month, there's a, um, a two-day workshop in Riverhead. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find the... Oh, yeah. So it's an on-farm compost workshop on October 28th and 29th. And I know I can't see without my glasses. Um, there'll be field trips. There'll be um, presentations covering topics about composting, regulations, quality, um, problems, tips and tricks, and... Um, you can call 852-3289. And I have a, a little saying that I um, found on the internet. Compost, because a rind is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> I know, it's really dumb. So yeah, so that's the recycling initiative. We've got the cardboard. We're having tours of the recycling, recycling facility. A lot I was of just there before I came here. <laughs> but you didn't go on a tour. No, but I know it so well. It, well, it's an excellent, excellent facility, and um, there's some misconceptions about it, and people ask me questions and tell me, oh, you know, this is how it is. I'm like, no, it's not. Um, so we're offering tours. They will be on um, October 17 and 24. They're Friday afternoons at 1 o'clock. Um, they'll be about an hour long, and if um, people would like to go on the tour, they should send an email to keepinitgreen at optonline.net, K-E-E-P-I-N-I-T-G-R-E-E-N. And um, we can only take 20 people per tour. If uh, they fill up, if there's a great demand, we'll open up more tours, of course. Um, so that's, uh, you know, we're just trying to get people to really understand um, what we're doing in our town and what they can do to help, again, increase revenue to our town, decrease our export of garbage, which would lower, you know, uh, emissions from the trucks and uh, our tipping fees. And I want to ask you about something else. I, I've heard this before. When you are uh, recycling glass, mm -hmm. there are some bottles that people throw away that are actually deposit bottles. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And why are we not having a special place for that and then getting mm. the deposit? Yeah, we've talked about that at the Litter Committee for, you know, a couple of years ago. It's just, um, you know, again, everything's got to be easy for people. You know, so if we had a special bin, you know, five cent deposit box, maybe they'd put the cans in there. Maybe, you know, but as it stands, the glass is pretty good in our town because we don't export it. We crush it and we use it. We've got a permit to do so and we can give it, you know, they have different grades of it, different sizes. And it's used in um, construction projects, drainage and such. So it's good because it's so heavy. It doesn't cost us. However, think about it. At the road ends, at the beaches, we don't recycle. So everyone's putting everything in one, and it all gets paid, you know, the, the highest I know, price. I know. So it that's very something well. that we're working toward. Um, you know, Steve and I, we talk a lot, the litter committee, we talk a lot. And um, our town code actually states, and I've probably said this a million times, that we must place our recyclable uh, items in the containers at all recreational areas throughout town. We don't have them. We can't follow the law. I know there's um, problems which makes us not able to do that, but Steve and I have a solution, and I'm not going to say what it is right now, but we're working on it. Oh, we can't and, wait to get Yeah, that. and, you know, it's going to be a community effort and it's going to be something that everyone's going to participate everyone's going to participate in it will help illegal dumping it will help um, people bring in their household trash to our rodents it will help litter yes. 
It will um, help the town. It will increase revenue. It will increase recycling. It seems to be win-win. I'll tell you about it later. Everyone, because I'm asking people about it um, and what they think. And I've gotten good. Um, there's one other thing, though, I want to say before we run out of time. We are running out of time, so you okay. have seconds. Send your tips and ideas to the same email address, keepingitgreen at optonline.net. Your recycling ideas, if you've got any tips, um, tricks on what you do, like you had said at the beginning of the show, reusing your bags. Absolutely. Um, anything that people do to reuse something, you know, because you don't need to throw everything away. Maybe there's some great and ideas. And I also want to tell you folks that there is a kind of plastic bag that you can buy at Wild by Nature <laughs> that breaks down. There is that option. It's yeah. corn-based, it's sugar-based. That's right. You've got options. And I bring them with me when I go shopping Good so that you. I can put my Save stuff Save the planet. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm trying to do. That's why I got solar panels on my truck.